Coming up on the show today, I'm on the red carpet of the Regeneration Project. Our man TJ goes behind the scenes with Shanola Hampton, actress from Shameless on Showtime, and we give you an exclusive behind the scenes look of Tower Heist, which is coming out on Blu-ray February 21st. This is Icy Places Hollywood. That's me talking to director Guy Ritchie before our interview. Pretty cool, huh? You know what's really cool? It's how I got here. Like most kids, I found my heroes in the movies. My dad took us to drive-in theater every Friday. It was there that I found the best and the worst that Hollywood had to offer. My first date was in a movie theater. When I grew up and work sucked, you could find me in a matinee recharging my batteries. Then one day I decided to create a website, I See Places, to write about movies. Tech grew and cameras went from this to this. And we started filming the instant movie review. That's when a guardian angel took notice and invited me to stop talking about movies and start talking to the people that make them. And that's how I ended up here in the movie capital of the world. I'm Steve Samblis, and this is my show. Welcome to Icy Places Hollywood. The Regeneration Project is an innovative documentary, something that I've never actually seen before, where they take five amazing disc jockeys and pair them in genres that they've never worked in before. The result is truly astounding. I got the opportunity to attend the red carpet and talk to some of these innovators. Check it out. So we are on the sardine-esque red carpet for the Regeneration Project, where we're actually waiting for the arrivals to happen right now. Now, this is what's funny. You never know about these red carpets. Sometimes they're really amazingly comfortable. You have a lot of room. And then sometimes they look like Marco's going to show them what this looks like over here. Can you get over there? <laughs> This is what it looks like. And we have to I have to hurdle over this fence here plus a rope to talk to people. So it's gonna be pretty exciting. We'll see what happens when we come back. Hey, Steve Samples, how are you? Nice to meet you, Kaiser. So tell me uh, what kind of what kind of music are you are you about? Uh, I I write pop music. It's uh, electronic, very synth based, and um, very mainstream. So what do you think about this concept of taking these amazing DJs and putting them with all these different very square peg and round hole type of music projects. I think it's amazing. I think um, today there's so much mixing going on and I think it's really embracing that whole that whole idea. And I, it's, it's really cool because I actually just graduated from Berklee College of Music and I found a DJ premiere actually. <laughs> um, yeah, I did a collaboration with the, with the college over the summer. So it, it's really neat to, to hear about that. So um, you haven't seen the movie yet, have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> I really so when are we going to see you, or how do we find you? This year, actually. My music's uh, it's going to be released really soon, actually. So you'll probably hear it over the summer. And you have a website? I do, kaiza.com. K-I-E-S-Z-A. <laughs> nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, Thank you, too. thank you. As an educator, what did you take away from this experience? I'm, ex I'm assuming every time you collaborate, you learn something in the process, oh, yeah. too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what did you bring away from this? Man, I, I learned I learned so much. I, I learned that I think what I learned from this experience mostly was that if somebody has a vision, um, that as long as you keep your eye on that vision, that you can really go go over the obstacles. There was plenty of obstacles when we were working on this track, and you know, from from trying to get. DJ Premier ready to conduct in such a short period of time to you know orchestrating a track in a very short period of time but you know it, that was our charge and and uh, you know and my hats are off to uh, the director uh, Amir Ben Lev and the producers especially Nick who, who really had the vision for this film you know it just it was inspiring to me to see that they had uh, they came to me after the uh, after the orchestra session and they were just like over the moon and they said you know well, after they heard it well after they shot the orchestra session yeah and they heard it they heard the track you know we laid down the orchestra and it was just high fives all around it was visually beautiful I'm, 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 I haven't seen it yet I can't wait to see it I can't wait to see it but they you know they were thinking this is you know this was in our head we were wanting to make this happen and you know and they said thanks to you we were able to actually make it happen so what about your students what, what were they just blown away by this experience they, you know a lot of them are here I actually my, my turntable ensemble actually flew out to, to, to be here at the premiere which is awesome um, and of course you know I'm just happy to be able to 
to say that, you know, Berkeley has a turntable ensemble, you know. I can't wait till you see the movie because it's amazing. I, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. Thanks great, so much. Great Appreciate talking you. to you. How are you doing, man? Good right. to see you. Am I calling you maestro now? Nah, <laughs> nah still DJ from me. Uh, a primo, whatever one you're comfortable Dude, with. I was feeling your pain when I heard classical music for you. Were you, were you just freaking on that? It was just the fact that um, that's not a genre that I have a lot of knowledge of besides when I sample it to make hip hop beats. You know, but then I'm just looking for a sound that has strings and whatnot, and I'm like, oh, that's dope. Pull it and try to put a one two, you know, one two to it. But with this, this is learning the actual music, understanding the language. It's like I said, it's like speaking French or Spanish. I now, I now speak classical. And you bring in Nas in. Oh my God, I just nailed That was actually an idea of the producers because we were on tour for Rock the Bells at the time. So they suggested it and I was like, well, I don't know if Nas would be down to do it, but you could ask him. They asked him. I didn't even get a chance to ask him. And they said, yo, we got Nas. I'm like, we're dope. You know, it makes me realize, though, as a DJ, though, you, you really work with all kinds of music. So it just made sense for you to do this, man. Yeah, it, 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 was, it still was a challenge, though, because, again, they had already told me, you're going to go to get a tutor. You're going to, I'm like, a tutor? You know, you're going to go to different conservatory schools. You might go to Prague and get with the orchestra there. But we ended up going to the Berkeley College of Music with, with Stephen. You worked, you worked with Stephen before? Yeah, that was for a milestone cer ceremony for DJs. It was a war ceremony honoring DJs, so it had nothing to do even remotely close to this. How, how long was this process? It took me, it took us, we shot maybe, for me, we shot about six days, six different days, not all on the same, same day. And, um, you know, every time they re regroup, they're like, the, the next day you're going to be shooting this, and then you're going to learn how to conduct, and you're going to learn how to do this. So I just always came hoping I, I would catch on, you know. Now, now, where does this music fit? What is this genre? Well, I mean, they put it under classical because they wanted to show how we can combine styles of what I'm used to with the style of, 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 uh, of classical. So. Well, I mean, everything's hip hop being that we sample. We, we, if I sneeze and, and take a booger out of my nose and it got a sound to it, it's going to be a booger beat, you know? Rap, rap, rap minus the lies, right? There you go. <laughs> Thank you, brother. With, with this movie and, and what they had you work on, did you feel, did you stay in your groove or did you try to come outside of it a bit? Well, you know, I do what I do and I say funk drummer. But I, I, I can play jazz too, it doesn't really matter. But this project uh, called for uh, a Zigaboo beat, yeah. and that's what I came up with. <laughs> Is that what it, we're gonna patent that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, uh, did you see the movie yet, by the way? No, sir, I haven't seen it. It is unbelievable. A movie built around music. It was all about the motion, what you guys did. And honestly, one of the best movies of this type I've ever seen in my life. I, I congratulate you on being here. Oh, thank you, and sir. You're too your, kind. Your music was amazing, too. Thank, thank you, sir. You very thank much. you so much. Thank I appreciate much. talking, man. God bless. Johnny, wave hello. It's all about the fresh beat and reinventing. At first I was reticent because uh, I'd never heard of Skrillex. And my son said, you gotta get his autograph or I won't speak to you. I said, okay, I'm down. Uh, now my son thinks I'm great. So uh, Did he try to take you outside your comfort zone on this album? On this album? <laughs> well, sure. But I, I've been into electronic music way back in classical world. So I was cool with that. The great idea is putting live musicians on top of this electronic bed. That's cool. You get the best of both worlds. What do you think the way it ended up? It was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, and the film, it's kind of tense. It seems like I'm not the only one who's sort of, wait a minute, I, I don't know, I'm going to do it my way. I, I, I'm not going to sing Smashing, um, this Martha and the Vandellas. And, and, uh, and then by the end, we're all together digging what we're d collaborating on. So that's sweet. Would, would you guys ever do something again where you got so emotionally into a song like you did this time? Because you really got into the city, into the motion. I'm doing this with you right now, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I would hope that we get emotional, you know, on all the songs. But this was this was unique, and uh, and uh, you know, we were all 
all fighting for what we hoped would be the best result, you know, and I think I think that worked out. It, 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 we get that. I mean, it's not always, it's never filmed, but it, we, it, we, it gets frustrating and it gets, uh, you get, it gets tense when you're trying to, you, 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 you're trying to take something someplace that you're not even sure where it's going to want to go, but you just know that it's not going in the right direction, or you know that you, you need to do better. So it, it gets, the moments like that all the time that every musician and every person that we've ever come across it has, where it's frustrating and it's tiring and it's exhausting and it's just because you, because it's all you know and it's all you want to do and you want to make sure that that you get it right and and and. and Sometimes you do, and sometimes you don't, and so it's it's a you know it's always a, a review or a negative response on some uh, social media that takes down something that's that. But it's a, but that's what the way of the world. So nobody's I'm not uh, bitching, but it's just one of those things where this is a kind of a uh, opens the door a little bit to what goes on in, in the process of making music is 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 fun and, and challenging and exhilarating and and um, sometimes um, just absolutely um, difficult. But you guys had a. You guys had a huge, powerful force that you're collaborating with. That must have been a big challenge as well. Jesus. Martha's awesome. She's got more energy than uh, all of the young people combined. <laughs> Somebody needs to make that movie, Martha Reeves' movie. It's, it, she's got a book, and it's a, she's a, an, uh, just a beautiful, beautiful person. We love her to death. Thanks, guys. You had some collaboration issues at the very beginning, it seemed, in, in the movie, with the uh, that, that one fellow, the country singer guy. Dr. Stanley, my man. He, he's got a, well, he, he's gonna do his thing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what he said, right? So so when did it come together? Because the song's great, but when did it finally land and really, you had it? Um, You know, I built a studio on my tour bus, because I was on tour while I was working on this track. And, um, it took me a while toying with all the pieces that I had recorded and captured. Um, but, you know, I think it really came together before it even started. I had an idea of what I wanted and, you know, I was able to adapt and work in the studio with the musicians and the singers and, uh, and get what I heard and then finally create that. You know, with the remix it was a different story and that was like uh, after the fact, just trying to make a bang and hit. Do you think this kind of music has to be heard in large groups? It's It's got that energy to it? Uh, no, not at all. You know, it's like, um, I love playing little intimate venues and I love rocking 20,000 person festivals. You know, it's like my set will depend on on how many people are there, but you know, for the most part, I just do what I think is fresh and um, my audience respects that and gets down to that, so. Awesome job, dude. The song is the song just kicked ass. Thank you so much. Thanks, bro. Herbie. Hey, man. Hi. Right. Weren't you doing this back in the day, what happened in this movie? <laughs> I remember you with those legs kicking and all that stuff in your music videos. Oh, yeah, you, that's you, what I did. You were doing this, man. Yes, I've done that. And, and I, I mean, that's how Rocket happened. I know. You know, I had no idea about hip hop. And the um, only thing I knew is I, heard, I had heard scratching on one record. You know, and it was uh, Malcolm McLaren. Uh, what year was that? Oh, this was 1985 or 84. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. In Africa, Bombada, and, and I was, all those I, I, I was watching the movie, I was thinking about you. I honestly was, because I thought about what you did with Rocket and how it just twisted a bunch of stuff into a song. And uh, honestly, you're really the pioneer of that. So you, yeah. I, I feel like you're going to feel a payoff in this movie. <laughs> it's come full circle, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I mean, who knew that it was going to mushroom into what it has become? Man, I think that, honestly, the, the music of this movie is going to be a game changer for a lot of people. I think it's going to take artists that have been around like you for a long time and maybe even rethink what you're doing. I think it'll get people I'm back. I'm already doing, doing that. Are you? I'm in the process of being influenced by young DJs t today. How cool yeah. is that? Because you, yeah. who was and your the whole concept, too, of using controllers to modify music? You know, guys that can take a box that has buttons and switches and knobs, and and and, and play, you know, audio clips, and manipulate and makes new That's stuff happen. Yeah, and they're improvising. Who was your? You must have been like influenced by James Brown, and who was your influence? Yeah, that was James Brown, Sly Stone, a lot of people like that. Herbie, thank you so much, brother. It's good seeing you, man. Okay, thank you. Oh, oh yeah. I mean,
Hey Mark, how much did this change you as an artist, this whole collaborative experience? I mean, I don't know if that, you know, I, I, working with Erica it certainly was amazing and going down to New Orleans to record, I mean, I learn something with every project that I work. I even hang out with Eric and Zig today, just being around two brilliant talents and kind of always absorbing, so, uh, yeah, it's, it, was a, it was good. Was it, did you have to let go a little bit, or did you did you have to maintain the helm through the whole project, you feel? I think as a producer, you have to somewhat maintain a sense of kind of, you know what's going on, or everyone just loses focus around you, but at the same time, I think the fact that everything had to happen in two days, we had to write the music in one day and do all the vocals and perform the second day, we had to, you have to let go of it. You can't really nitpick and get kind of in the same way you would over an album that you have a certain amount of time. The end result of the song, what came out of it that surprised you the most when it was finished? That it was good. <laughs> well, it was good. It was just, I don't know, like, you, sometimes you work on something, you leave two, two days, and then somewhat, like, a week later, someone will go, like, hey, I just heard that song you did with Erica, like, that's my favorite thing you've done, or, you know, that not everyone feels like that, but it's nice to, you have a bit of perspective a little later on, and I do, I do like the song a lot. Was jazz kind of a automatic, it was your, it was right for you, wasn't it? It was good. I feel a bit guilty because I didn't have the crazy, maybe, stretch that Pretty Lights might have had with the country music and stuff. But, yeah, uh, I, you know, I'm familiar with some of that stuff and the music that I make, funk and soul, is sort of directly in the lineage of jazz. So maybe it wasn't the most giant stretch, but I'd also, I'd never recorded a song like that before. Erica, what we wrote was kind of more, you know, written on the page and then the performing live is truly the spirit of jazz and the improvisation is where it sort of came alive. I guess regeneration is like, I came up in the hip hop world where we used to sample old soul records and jazz records and that's how we reinvented and now you've got Skrillex collaborating with the Doors and these different kind of things so, you know, it's not just to steal, it's just to, I guess, yeah, it's to steal. <laughs> Thanks, All right, thank you okay. guys. Have a good night, brother. Welcome back. I See Places actually produces several shows other than just I See Places Hollywood. One of the shows we're working on is an urban-based entertainment show co-hosted by TJ Jones. Now, we just had a great surprise recently a few days ago while shooting this episode. TJ had the opportunity to interview actress from Shameless, Shanola Hampton. Well, what TJ didn't tell us or anyone else on the cast was that TJ has been the best friends with Shanola for about nine years now. And he surprised her during the interview. Check this out. <laughs> Forgot about that. Oh, wow. Hi. So we're here. First of all, this is my first celebrity interview. And it's the first time I've interviewed a celebrity that actually has my phone number and will call me back. <laughs> we're here with Shanola Hampton. Hi. Uh, one of the stars of Shameless. Congratulations. Thank you. What season are you on right now? We are, we've just been picked up for the third season. The third season. So I'm excited, but the second season is airing right now. Airing right now? Yeah, which wow. I'm excited about. Now, we need to give everybody some backstory. Shanola and I are really good friends. Best friends. Best friends. It, BBF. Which, uh, there we go. Do you have a better friend than me? Uh, I don't. Okay. Not until the camera Because the way you said best friend no. was kind of like, <laughs> Um, <laughs> no. I may be her best no, no, friend, no, no, but no, she's no, no. not I mine. Didn't put it out there like, oh, The Rock is my guy. And he's like, <laughs> man, I met you at no, craft service. We're so best anyway, friends. We are. Um, so Chanel is always asking me, have you seen the show? Have you seen the show? And if you guys have seen the show, it's wonderful. Chanel doesn't have <laughs> her clothes on in every episode. Some, maybe she's a little more scantily clad. So it's kind of like, Walking into the shower and seeing your sister there, Does it, it and you close you the door really fast. <laughs> when you want me to watch it again, I gotta wait for you to take a shower and go back into the bathroom and look again. <laughs> so it's weird. But anyway, I'm, I'm so proud of you. I remember actually we were at Panera when you got the news from your yes, agent. Yes, you were with me when I got the news. TJ was with me when I got the news about booking Shameless and actually has a picture of on me my here phone. on your phone yes. of me getting the news that I booked Shameless. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god! So crazy. Look at the journey that we're having. All right, yeah. but it's not about us. No. It's about me. Okay. Talk to me about your journey, uh, at least as an African American actress. What has that path been like for you? Um, it's been really difficult. There are very few roles that are for people of color 
um, women and men. So it's definitely been a challenge. I also have natural hair and dreadlocks, so that's been an added challenge. It took me about 10 years to book a show. And luckily, Shameless was able to look outside of the box and see sexy or pretty in a different light, which is why they chose me as Veronica. And I'm so grateful for that. But it's definitely, it's still a journey for people of color to get roles. It's not like all of a sudden I'm on a show and it, Everything's movie fine calls and I'm are coming Superman in now. Five. No, no, right. no, it's none of that. So do you feel added pressure? Do you feel like you represent our people? Do you feel like you represent people of color when you're on the show? Is it, do you feel added pressure? Um, I don't feel added pressure at all because um, I kind of thrive on challenges and, and pressure. So to, I don't really allow myself to feel that. As far as being a representative, I represent myself and I try to do that in a very positive way. And if I can give young girls a different face of beauty, if I can give young girls to see a dark skinned girl with natural hair who's succeeding and who is educated and who is very successful, that I don't mind being a role model for, but I am only a representative of me. I got you. That's actually really good. Now you talk about being a role model. Not only are you beautiful, you're a successful actress, but we can also talk about some education. Yes. Why is that important to people of color and especially young girls that might be watching? Yeah, young girls and young boys. I think it's really important to have a dream and then take the steps to follow your dream. And that's not just saying in the instance of acting, I'm going to get found in a coffee shop and go to LA and just sit there and be pretty until a producer sees it. That's just not how it works. It's not reality. You want to be able to feed yourself and, and education allows you not only the opportunity to be in college with uh, several different cultures and get to know people, but it also feeds whatever it is your craft is. But that's for anything. I am a big advocate for education. And not only did I do undergrad, I went on to graduate school. Yeah, you have school. an advanced degree. Yeah, because graduate school, undergrad is more of general studies, but graduate school allows you to hone in on exactly what you want to do, which was very, very, very good for me. What did you want to do? I wanted to be an actress. That's what I wanted to do. And um, my father said, that's great. You can be an actress, but my sisters are all educators and they're principals. And uh, he said, so you kind of have a, have a fallback plan. And getting my master's not only allowed me to be a better actor, but also if I things messed up in Hollywood, I could be a professor. And that's not a bad career either. It's a great career. Not so, at all. <laughs> so it's a good fallback. I'd take her class. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really I used to take teach. I'm actually, I'm a really good teacher, actually. Really? I throw my shoes at my students and everything. I'm like, what are you doing? This scene sucks. <laughs> They'll tell you that. Be real. They're going to shut down your school. Show me you the that. truth. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, now, That's... let's talk about Dad yeah. and your family a little bit. Yes. What's Dad do? Dad is a pastor mm, in South stop Carolina. Right there. Stop right there. Hallelujah. What's Dad do? Dad's a pastor Dad's a in pastor. South Carolina. He, only, he also owns his own mm. car dealership, but mm. he's a pastor first. All right. Yeah. Has he seen the show? He has, and he loves it. He loves it? Okay, he doesn't love it. What was that it. conversation like he when you said, He doesn't love it. Daddy, okay, he doesn't love it. Um, I got a show. Yes. You know what's funny? No. You might see my areola. Did I tell you? <laughs> Did I tell you the story? No, because um, I heard it, but, I but think yeah, you, have yeah. you guys heard this? No. Okay, you I'll tell listen. the story. So <laughs> I um, I right when you are going through the process of acting and and you have the auditions, you have what's called the test session, which is the very last session. So I had a really good feeling about this role, but I knew what the role consists of. So I called my dad right before the test session. And I was like, Daddy. I think I'm about to get this role, and here is what it entails. Okay. And he said, <clears throat> are you sure? I said, yeah, I, I really want it, and I love the project. He said, all right, well, we know the difference between what's work and reality, and that's your work, so you just go for it. And he watches the show every week. He, too, has the, oh, my gosh, I just walked in. My daughter's <laughs> in the shower. <laughs> And there was the one episode where I was ironing in season one, yeah. topless, and it was the longest scene ever. So my daddy was like trying to turn his head, turn back, boobies, turn back, boobies. He's like, how long does this scene last? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> now wait, wait, all right. Now we're talking about your dad and other influential guys. Yes. You're married. Yes. Fantastic guy. Yes. Guess what, I'm friends with him too. Are you? We'll talk about. I'm just your friend. Oh, I'm very she's, possessive she's about so my friends. Playing. Yeah, I just know you are. Darren Dukes, I said his name. <gasps> he doesn't like for you to say his name, Darren, see, I Dad. said it. Don't and do that. And I dare that. you to walk onto this he set right like now. It. Come, okay. He's doing a show. 
what he's doing a show. He's it's doing Stat, that show with Static. With the producers of this show. Yes, exactly. Uh, I'm we'll really excited details. about it because he's really funny, and this is a great opportunity to show his chops. And what's great about Darren, my husband, we met in undergrad, so we've been together for quite a long time, and we met as theater students. And it's very difficult when two people are trying to pursue the same dream, as you know, when you're starting a life together. So he really sacrificed being the genius that he is and worked for Microsoft, but his passion has always been acting. So for him to have an opportunity like Static, I'm so happy for him because he's able to really- So you guys are on parallel really, paths now. So we're doing, it's... yeah, well, yeah, we are, but you know, we're very supportive of one another and he's very supportive of me. So we're not on the same path, but we're like cheerleaders in each other's paths. Which is great. Which is nice. Which is something else we don't talk about enough, like marriage and people of color and all the other stuff and the faces, I mean, the, the, the trials and tribulations that you face as a married couple in Hollywood, mm -hmm. what happens, all the other stuff. Um, what does Darren think about some of your scenes? Do you guys borrow some stuff from TV and try it out Ew. at home? No. Oh, sorry. He is not, let me tell you what Darren Excuse thinks. me. It, 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 Darren is really cool guy, as you know, but he's the coolest. Oh, I don't know him. Sorry, a, did no, you say that? Shut up. No, I did say you know him. I said, are you for his friend? Because you're my friend. I can't be Darren's friend. By extension. Darren's a really cool guy. Why wouldn't he be cool with me? Do you guys hear this? Of no, of course he's cool with you, but I want you all to myself. Anyway. Can right. we do the interview? Let's talk I'm about it. Yes, Darren's everyone. a really cool Forgive guy us. and? Uh, Darren's a really cool guy and he's very secure. And because we met as actors in the theater department, he knew what that kind of was going to be. He's seen me kiss guys on stage. This, of course, is a little different. Um, Just a little bit. <laughs> but by the end of season one, he had one episode where he was like, oh, babe, I had to rewind. And I was like, did she have a sex scene? Because he's fallen in love with the show okay. and he really doesn't pay attention to the sex scenes anymore. He's quite immune to it. Have we tried any of the things? That would be a no. Okay. Although I wouldn't mind doing that whole s &M thing where I'm like grabbing him from behind. Great, we're oh, gonna move this sorry. along. Um, so obviously you're both creative. Yes. Um, I understand that acting isn't all that you want to do. You write to. Do you have any other projects coming up? Are you doing anything yes, else? Yes, I'm actually, well, I'm more of a, on the producing track, not uh, the writing track. Uh, so I have a project, I really want to be able to produce projects that show a multicultural cast mm -hmm. in a very smart, risky way uh, that doesn't dumb down the audience at all. Like and, the Wayans Brothers. No? I can't believe you just said that. I wasn't they talking about- They had some about... riveting scenes. You, you mean- Let me stop. No, I... <laughs> Did you see how serious she got? She's like, um, I'm trying to uh... save him, but- No, 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 no. <laughs> He's okay. kidding. Wayne's brothers are genius. Yeah. And, and Living Color's coming back. Anyway. It is. Uh, anyway, uh, but, so TV. I really would like to, to really produce some great, great, great projects like uh, in the realm of the soul foods that were on Showtime, that series, gotcha. and, and really get that off. So that's my next step. All right. Or that's my step now. That's your step Actually, now. Actually, thanks to you. Why thanks to me? Well, um, so a story that you don't know, a personal story. Uh, TJ and I were having lunch and we were, we have our best friend catch-up sessions. And during that lunch, TJ and I were talking about my dreams. And I said, well, I eventually want to produce. And what makes best friends great is, and I said, he said, eventually, well, what are you waiting for? And I said, well, I'm waiting until this, that, and the other. He was like, but the time is now. And the very next week, I got a call about projects, and that, thanks to you, I was able to put it into the universe and make it happen. You're sweet. I'll take My that. buddy. So you guys can log on to the website and uh, ask me to help you with your problems. <laughs> oh, that's a great segment. Ask TJ. He's really good at advice. I'm good too, though. Sweet. We should probably talk to the producer before oh, we start doing all TJ that stuff. Ask TJ on www. Oh. I love black movies. I love black movies. Com. Yeah, www. Nasa. <laughs> TV one. <laughs> I love black movies. Me too. Don't you? That's why we're here. Especially good black movies. And that's why we want to talk to people like you and go all around the world to discover them and expose them and highlight all the good projects that are happening. That's great. Shanola. Yes. That's all the time we have. Really? Yeah, it is. This went by so quickly. It did. I had I so stay. much fun. You can still stay. Oh. But you can't be on camera anymore. Oh wow. I well, miss thank Sierra. You. <laughs> So we're gonna see it again. Sierra's thank you so much. fabulous. She is. Yeah, she's really beautiful yeah, yeah, yeah. too. She is. All right. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. I love you. Hello. We'll see you guys soon. So now we close the show with a behind the scenes look of the making of Tower Heights, which is available on Blu ray February 21st. 
This hilarious comedy featuring Eddie Murphy and Ben Stiller is something you guys have got to check out. So until next time, for IC Places, I'm Steve Samless, and I'm out of here. I've known Brett for like 15 years. It's the first time we've ever worked together, and he has incredible enthusiasm. Well, yeah! I mean, I've known him for so long, it's fun to finally work with him and really get to know him in a different way. Hey, come on! Yeah, yeah. I didn't like that one, Brett. <laughs> I'm trying to do my next three movies, I'm trying to, you know, work with Brett as much as possible. From the top, last one. Go ahead. Yeah, sure, it's the last one. We do a lot of takes. Take two. He will keep at something until he thinks it's perfect. Take three. And no matter what. Take five. Let's rehearse one more. He has that kind of ambition as a director. Take eight. And he has the kind of enthusiastic personality that you want him to win. I told you it was wrong. I, I told and, and that's good for me because I can easily fall into, you know, hey man, I've been doing this 30 years, you know. I can fall into that, so it's good to have energy around me sometimes. And action. Brett is the most gregarious, enthusiastic people person. Only he could have kept all those balls in the air and made them all pop. Well, the whole thing started out as uh, I had an idea. I wanted uh, to do a thing with a bunch of comics. I wanted to get all the funny, funniest guys around and do like an Ocean's Eleven type movie where everything went wrong. Oh, sorry. I was like, pull it, pull it. I couldn't get it. <laughs> Eddie's original idea was to get all the young black comedians together, to get Chris Tucker, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle himself, and they all work in this building. Five. It was Eddie Murphy's original idea, and a lot of times he has these original ideas that he will give to me. He'll give me a sentence or two sentences, and then it's sort of an incumbent upon us to collaborate and then build it into a real movie. Like a news for you. Today, Steve McQueen is my little bitch. And we developed, I think, maybe two scripts that didn't come out right. I gave the script to Ted Griffin, and I said, can you read this? And he came back to me, and he said, I have good news and I have bad news. Good news is I want to write this for you. The bad news is I want it to be a page one rewrite. I think it was, at the time, set in the Trump Tower, and it was robbing Trump's penthouse. It's just a bunch of guys stealing. There's no nothing new about that. It's just guys stealing out of money. Right now, they're saying that anyone who invested with Mr. Shaw has been defrauded. And then the economy tanked, and Bernie Madoff ripped off millions and billions of dollars. Did he get your money too? Yeah. And when that happened, Brett and I were talking, I said, here's how you do it. You put Madoff like character in the penthouse and it's economic justice. It's the little guy taking on the, the big guy who screwed over everybody. Someday I'm gonna find a way to make things right. And he came up with these individual characters that were not driven by their ethnicity because he said, remember, this is a class film. This is about the upstairs versus the downstairs. Not a film about race. Hey. Hey. Why are you staying in this motel? I'm thinking of becoming a male prostitute. I'm not sure what my job on the heist is exactly, except that I'm good with the numbers. You know how many weeks I'd have to work at the BK to make 20 million? 18,600. I'm being evicted, though, so I deserve the money, I think. Well, generally, I rob balconies. Balconies? Like a cat burglar? That way I never get charged with breaking an in. What do you get, like potted plants? Matthew Broderick is one of my contemporaries. We came out around the same time, I've seen everything that he's done. And uh, just to be on a set with, you know, a guy like this, just master actor, and his little moves, they say, oh yeah, I remember I've seen him do that little move. Oh, you hear his voice, and you're like, oh yes, that, that's his voice, you know. Uh, anyway, thanks very much. Delicious crackers. I'll be in touch. Mr. Fitzhugh, please. You gotta... I grew up on, on Matthew Broderick, and to have him play Fitzhugh, I mean, you know, Ferris Bueller, I was called Ferris Bueller in high school. I mean, I was like, you know, it was so amazing to have him on the set. Who's that girl in a red dress? That's Marianne from Sales. She's a lesbian. Okay, that's irrelevant. Marianne is a lesbian? I think what this movie has that no other movie has is just guys that have no idea what they're doing. Did anybody take in what I just said? Well, it seems like there's a gauntlet of lesbians. This is really the antithesis of the Ocean's Eleven movies. You know, these guys were experts in their own, and they had their own talent. There is no talent involved in robberies here. You never said it was a real safe made out of steel. Going after $20 million, what do you think it'd be, wood? It was a coup getting Eddie Murphy. And, we, you know, when I was finished with the script, I gave it to him, and he was like, I'm in. I'm in. 
And they called me and was like, hey, Ben's gonna, wants to do that thing. And uh, there's this role in it that's really cool. And I read it and it was like, hey, this is kind of cool and funny. So are you guys in or out? I'm in. I'm in. What's in it for me? And I need you. Yeah, you need me because you cut these idiots. You think of the guys you want to try to do the job with. Brett and Brian put together a really, really great cast. Everybody in the cast is, is funny and likable, and you want everybody in the cast to win. Shouldn't we be avoiding law enforcement? I never saw an episode of Matlock where the criminal banged Matlock. It's an extraordinary cast. I mean, I would have to say I've never worked with an ensemble that was quite this pristine.